Motorola's new Moto X isn't loaded with the kind of specs that typically accompany a super high-end smartphone, but that hasn't stopped Google from pushing it as a flagship contender. On contract, the suggested retail price of the Moto X starts at $199, the same price point as one of the most popular smartphones in history, Samsung's Galaxy S4. How do these competitors fare in a head-to-head -head challenge? Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Motorola Moto X versus Samsung Galaxy S4. Last week, we brought you a comparison featuring the Moto X up against the Google Edition HTC One, and we'll follow the same format when comparing the X against the stock Galaxy S4 running TouchWiz atop Android Jelly Bean. We'll do that in four categories, build, software, camera, and test notes. To make sure you don't miss future reviews, comparisons, and features, subscribe to Pocket Now here on YouTube and follow us where we tweet, post, snap, and share. These smartphones differ not just in terms of their design, but in the philosophy behind that design. Samsung's Galaxy S4 is largely a refresh of last year's Galaxy S3, but made even lighter and thinner. By contrast, the Moto X is a complete departure from the hard, angular Motorola of old, it's tangible proof that Google's acquisition of the company has had a significant impact. The X features a curved back with a finger-friendly dimple and a soft-touch finish, while the Galaxy S4 offers the now familiar glossy plastic hyperglaze coating that looks good but scratches easily. While our Moto X is black, the highly customizable device will be available in over 250 color combinations, and it's fully assembled in the USA. The Galaxy S4, like most other smartphones, is manufactured outside the US, and it's available in just a handful of colors. A much more visible difference between these devices is found in the display. While the Moto X manages quite a feat in packing a 4.7-inch 720p AMOLED screen into its petite chassis, the Galaxy S4 is no slouch here either. A 5-inch 1080p AMOLED panel has the X's screen beat in size and in resolution. We found that the X does offer higher saturation and warmer whites, regardless of the display mode selected, but neither of these screens is hurting for color vibrance or black levels. There's no getting around the S4's higher resolution and pixel density, and if you try hard, you can probably make it out, but only if you're looking for the difference. Taking a look at the engines, the most notable difference here is that only one of these phones lets users get under the hood. The Galaxy S4 includes user-expandable memory and a user-replaceable battery, while the Moto X doesn't. The 50 gigs of free Google Drive storage that you get with a Moto X purchase helps, but sometimes there's no substitute for a good micro SD card, so Samsung wins the power user points in this regard. In terms of raw power, our AT&T Galaxy S4 here also packs the more conventional chipset, which is also widely regarded as more powerful. It's a Snapdragon 600 clocked at 1.9 GHz and backed up by 2 gigs of RAM, while the Moto X offers a customized dual-core S4 Pro at 1.7 GHz. Hold on, though. That application processor is backed up by the same Adreno 320 GPU as found in the Galaxy S4, and it's also augmented by two independent cores, one for linguistics processing and the other for contextual computing. Motorola is calling this home-cooked system the X8 mobile computing system, and it's so different from the system inside the Galaxy S4, and almost any other phone out there, that you're left thinking the performance just has to reflect that. But that's not really the case. Sure, there are some deviations in benchmark results, but not necessarily what you'd expect. If you're a hardcore gamer, you'll want to take those into account, but on a day-to-day -day basis, common tasks like opening and flicking between apps general responsiveness overall and so forth, pretty comparable. In fact, the Moto X has a slight edge here. You rarely see the hiccups and stutter on the X that you'll occasionally get on the S4. That's probably because the X is running a near stock build of Android 4.2.2, while the Galaxy S4 also has to run TouchWiz, Samsung's heavy third-party UI, on top. That UI completely changes the look and feel of Android and offers a whole catalog of special features to go on top of it. That catalog includes everything from Smart Stay, which keeps the screen on while you're looking at it, to Air Gesture, which allows you to use your finger like a hovering stylus, and much, much more. Whether those features are worth anything to you depends on your own taste. See our Galaxy S4 full review to help with that, but there's a lot of them. With the S4, the name of the game is quantity of features, not quality. 
Now, Google and Motorola have opted for a completely different approach on the X, emphasizing just a few added features. These make use of the Moto X's special processing cores to allow for such add-ons as touchless control, which lets you give the phone verbal hands-free commands even when it's in standby, and active display, which detects when the phone is removed from a pocket or flipped over on a table and displays a quick summary of received notifications. Each suite of features is meant to make its respective phone more useful and user-friendly, but we think Motorola gets closer to achieving that goal than Samsung does. The Moto X is not flawless in this regard. Some of its features could use some honing, as we mentioned in our full review, but we think it offers more value in its smaller, focused assortment of improvements than Samsung's shotgun approach does. In terms of the camera, the Moto X's viewfinder is brilliant and beautiful in its simplicity. A toggle wheel slides out from the left only when you need it, offering only the bare essentials for customization, and touch to capture and flick directly to gallery make the X's 10 megapixel camera as easy and usable as a Windows phone shooter. By contrast, the viewfinder software controlling the Galaxy S4's 13 megapixel camera is pretty complex, with drop down menus and sliding toolbars that take some getting used to. And there's no quick flick of the wrist to jump into the camera, as there is on the Moto X. But where the X's software shines, it's let down quite a bit by the hardware. With both cameras in 16 to 9 shooting modes, 10 megapixels for the Moto X and 9.6 megapixels for the Galaxy S4, the S4's shots are significantly better. Colors are brighter on the Galaxy's photos, and while sharpness is sometimes comparable between the two devices, when there is an edge, it belongs to Samsung. Adding HDR helps with the color to a degree on the X, but Samsung's photos still come out looking better. The Moto X does try its best to deliver a sharper low-light experience than the S4, and in normal automatic shooting modes it succeeds to a degree, but the amount of noise in the X's shots is almost absurd. While the S4 doesn't do much better in illuminating very dark scenes, at least it delivers clearer results. In camcorder mode, the Moto X brings some fairly good stabilization and audio to the game, but again, the colors are muted and dead in contrast to the bright, vibrant tones of the Galaxy S4's shooter. Here's a few seconds of 1080p video from each. The Galaxy S4 video stabilization disabled at normal walking pace on a brightly lit day outside of Boston with a slight breeze. breeze. And we'll end this with a focus test using the typical iced coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. Everyone's favorite coffee, if your name is Michael Fisher. So while the Moto X delivers okay results that can be cleaned up after the fact, along with fast shutter speed and a wider field of view, those advantages aren't enough to overcome the better results of the Galaxy S4. The Samsung shooter trounces the Motorola camera, and that's not even taking into account Samsung's more customizable shooting modes. If optical performance is a priority for you, there's no debating it. The S4 wins, hands down. But the pendulum swings the other way in terms of voice calls, a field Motorola has quite a bit of experience in. This shouldn't be a surprise if you've watched our other Galaxy S4 comparisons, but the Moto X delivers much better quality on both sides of the call, and much better noise cancellation as well. It's also more pleasant to talk on thanks to that curved construction. In phone calling, it's the winner all around. That advantage persists in terms of speakerphone, though we are dealing with a very loud speaker on both of these units. If pressed, we'd probably prefer the speaker on the X, due to its slight edge and bass and a slightly fuller sound. That advantage also translates to the headphone listening experience as well. You'll probably be able to listen to your tunes a bit longer on the Galaxy S4, though, not just because of its slightly larger battery, but because that battery is also replaceable, as mentioned before. Still, each of these devices should get you through a full day of moderate to heavy use with no problem. The story of these two devices is one of fundamentally different concepts, resulting in totally divergent end results. They both have their ups and downs, and where your priorities lie will govern which is the right one for you. If you need a smartphone with the maximum possible amount of features, a solid camera, one of the best displays on the market, and a conventional, powerful heart beating under it all, the Galaxy S4 is your phone. If, on the other hand, you're looking for a more palm-friendly, more rugged build, more polished features and software, excellent voice quality, and more customization than you can find anywhere else, the American-assembled Moto X is the better fit. Either way, though, 
these are both excellent products in their own way, so the money you shell out will be well spent. Thank you for tuning in for this one, folks. We hope you enjoyed this comparison. As I mentioned before, we have a full review on each of these devices on our YouTube channel and a full written review at pocketnow.com. Visit us there. But before you go anywhere, please toss us a like if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below if you have some feedback. Follow us on social media and stay tuned for the next one. It's coming very soon. Until then, thank you for watching. This has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. We'll see you then.